This month is Love Never Fails. And today we're going to talk about the love commandments. And uh, we'll be in Leviticus chapter 19. And we're going to look at some verses about that. Jonathan just read First John chapter 2. And John says, it's not a new commandment that I write unto you. It's a commandment that you've heard from the beginning. Um, I like to say, that Jesus even says, uh, Jesus did say, I have a new commandment for you. And, uh, but it's still the old commandment. And we'll explain that a little bit later when we read that. And so, from the beginning, from the Old Testament on, there has been this one theme this one commandment that God wants us to keep. Many a time people say, uh, I don't know if I can keep all the rules in Christianity. Uh, by the way, I hate it when preachers try to say there are no rules. There are. There's plenty of rules in Christianity. Without rules, you have anarchy. Ask the state of California about their crime rate. Without rules, you have anarchy. You, you don't have any structure. In a home without rules, there is no structure. So even God has rules. Even in Christianity, there are rules. Uh, and there are commandments that we're to keep. And there is one rule, one commandment that is a theme throughout the Bible. It's the old commandment, the new commandment. They're the same. And that is to love your brother or love one another. <clears throat> All the way through. Well, I remember one time I was preaching at this one church and uh, there was talk about me being the pastor there and, and all those things. And I was preaching there for a while. And uh, finally, uh, you know, after a few sermons, a deacon came up to me one time and said, quit preaching in the Old Testament. Said, what? He said, we're a New Testament church. And, and there's no need for you to preach in the Old Testament. So my next two sermons were straight out of the Old Testament. But uh, the thought that the Old Testament has no value, has no purpose, is com completely wrong. Yes, we're a New Testament church. Yes, we're a New Testament era. But that does not mean we dismiss the Old Testament. If you want to know how God feels about something, if you want to see the heart of God, go to the Old Testament. It is definitely there. And there's things in the Old Testament how God feels and thinks about our body. And how we should take care of it. How he feels and thinks about society. And how it should be ran. And government. If we ignore those things. We lose those. Thoughts. And feelings. Of God. No. We're not under the Old Testament. We don't have to keep those commandments. Thank God. Because I like him. And if you kept the Old Testament law, I couldn't eat ham. And I love it too much. Thank God I'm not a Jew. Well, I like catfish every once in a while. You were not allowed to eat catfish. Uh, there, there's many things in the Old Testament. Thank God we don't keep the Old Testament law. And there, believe it or not, there are some people who believe in keeping the Old Testament. And uh, I ask them about this and they get angry. So where do you go dig your hole to, to do your bathroom? That's in the Old Testament, by the way. We shouldn't be using bathrooms because the Old Testament law says where to go dig your hole and to use the restroom. I mean, that's in the Old Testament law. The principle thereof, you know, the Jewish people had this idea better than I wish even early America would have. You can't have raw sewage in the streets or running around. And so they had to go outside of the camp and they had to dig a hole and take care of their business there away from people so they wouldn't get sick. And that's the principle. 
Anyhow, I really went off on a rabbit there. <coughs> so in the Old Testament and the New Testament both have the same commandment. Leviticus 19 tells us about the love commandment. Jesus says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. John, whoo, forgot to put the end on there. John 13, 34. Now, what did Jesus mean? A new commandment I give unto you. In the old commandment, and hopefully we'll get there soon, in Leviticus, it's to love one another or love your neighbor uh, uh, as, wait a minute now, love your neighbor as yourself, as you love yourself. The new commandment, Jesus says, I'm going to one-up it. You love everyone as I have loved you. As I have shown you love. You're to love everyone the same way. Well, bottom line, what did Jesus do? He gave his life for who? All. Everyone. And that's how much he loved everyone. So if we're supposed to love everyone like Jesus, what are we supposed to do? Give our lives to everyone. It's an amazing thing in, in the transformation in Christianity. As you transform in your heart and your mind, you learn more and more that this life is less and less about you. About your heart, your feelings, your, your struggle. And when it's more and more about others, when it's more about your children, when it's more about your wife or your your husband when it's more about your church when it's more about the loss when it's more about the world when your life is more about that you're getting it jesus came and gave his entire life to everyone and he's our example of what love is and how to love and so that's the new commandment, but it's still the old commandment, is it not? The new commandment is the old commandment. Love one another. So let's look at Leviticus and the law of commandments. The love commandments. Obedience is a love commandment. Obedience is a commandment of God. When we love, we're to obey. We're to obey. Now, you'll find that in the New Testament also when the Bible says for like children to obey their parents. Husbands and wives are to obey each other. Submit to each other. That's obedience. Humility to one another. Obedience is a commandment of God for love. He says here, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Leviticus 19, 1 through 2. Well, where do you get that? Well, God straightly says that I have commandments to keep you holy. And you're to obey these commandments. If you obey these commandments, you show your love towards me. You're to be holy. That means obey these commandments. To help you become spotless before God. Clean. Not to sin. Here's the goal. This is what you're supposed to be aiming for. By the way, that's how you show you love me. So obedience. Obedience is a commandment. Of love. If you love me, keep my commandments. First John 14. That's John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 26. So God says in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, if you love me, you'll obey me. 
By the way, if you love your mother and father, you will what? Obey them. Obey them. If you love your boss, you will do what? Obey her or him. If you love your country, you will what? Obey it. We can even go to the opposite. Oh, disobedience shows what? Hatred, disrespect. And so the commandment is this. The commandment of love is obedience shows your love. And you're commanded to obey because of your love. We are to obey each other. The Bible talks constantly in the New Testament about submitting to one another. Submitting. That's obedience, reverence, respect to one another. There are times uh, that my wife comes and she tells me to do things. And I could say, I'm the man. And I'll do what I want. I've tried some of that a little bit. It doesn't work. But to show my love towards her, I will do what? Obey. Obey. She wants the dishes rinsed out. To show my love, I'll obey that commandment. She, she wants me to do certain things. Those are her commandments. To show my love, I'll obey those commandments. And so, obedience is a love commandment. God says, this is my commandment. Obey. But doing so, you're showing love. You're showing love. Next one. <clears throat> Respect is a love commandment. God has a commandment for us to respect others and to show respect, and that shows our love. If we keep that commandment, we will show love. You shall fear every man, his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19.3. Now, in, in the King James Bible, a lot of times that word fear is meant to show reverence to, respect to. And, and in newer translations, they'll actually put reverence or respect, and that's fine. That's exactly what that word means. So, it says, ye fear every man, respect every man, his mother and father. That shows love. And then he says, keep my Sabbath. Keep my holy day. That shows love. Respect the Sabbath. That shows your love. Nowadays, we don't have the Sabbath. We have Sunday. That's God's day. And to show your respect to God, your reverence to God, where should you be? In church. You should be at church Every time you can be there, there's times you can't. Uh, nobody wants you here if you're, Kay was upset too. Kay was uh, concerned, not upset, because I was coughing and sneezing a lot yesterday, and she was just concerned that I'd be up here coughing and sneezing, and people would be uh, wondering, why is he here if he's coughing and sneezing all over us? Nobody wants that, do we? So, you know, if you're sick, don't come. That's fine. But every chance you get, you should be in church. Why? Because it makes the pastor look good? Why? Because, you know, we want a lot of people here so we look good? No. Your act of love, it's commanded by God. The commandment of love is to show respect and give him his day Sunday your commandment of love for everyone else is to show reverence to respect to matter of fact the Bible says 
in the New Testament to think of others more than yourself. Better than yourself. More highly than yourself. Respect others. It's a commandment of love. Here we find in Leviticus. Respect is a commandment of love. Faithfulness is a commandment of love. It says in Leviticus 19.4, Turn ye not unto idols, nor make yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So here we are. God says this is the commandment, a love commandment. If you are faithful to me, you show me your love. You show me your love. Faithfulness. Don't cheat on me, God is saying. Don't go worship other gods. Don't go chasing after other gods. I know not everyone's mature enough to get this, but God called Israel harlots because they went chasing after other gods. They were cheating on him. Spiritual harlots. Faithfulness is a commandment of God. And in doing so, when you show faithfulness, you show your love. Isn't that true in a marriage and in a home? When you show faithfulness, you show your love. Being faithful to God shows your love. And it's a commandment of God. Being faithful to your husband or wife shows your love. And it's a commandment of God. Don't go chasing after other gods. Don't go chasing after other men, other women. Don't do that. It doesn't show your love. The commandment is be faithful. That's the love commandment. Be faithful. Compassion is a love commandment. Let's look at Leviticus 19.10. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of the, thy field. Neither shalt thou gather the gleaning of the harvest, and thou shalt not glean the vineyard. Neither shalt thou gather every grape of the vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and strangers. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19.10. So it's a commandment of God to show compassion. It's his commandment. That's his commandment. When you go to harvest, leave the corners. Don't harvest the corners. If you drop anything on the ground as you're harvesting, leave it. Do not pick it up. Why? To show compassion to the poor. And those who are in need. And God says, that's my commandment. And so when you show compassion, by the way, compassion and empathy are two different things. Anyone can have empathy. That's feel sorry for. That's to have a feeling, an emotion is empathy. But compassion is when you do something about it. When you act on your empathy. That's compassion. And God says, have compassion. I command you to have compassion. Because compassion is a love commandment. When you have compassion on the poor and the needy, you show your love. When you have compassion on one another, you show your love. You have compassion in someone in the church. By the way, uh, this week, I wish more people were here to hear this. This week, uh, Kay and I came to the church Friday to get some food and things for a family in need that our church doesn't even know, probably will never know, never seen, but the ladies prepared meals for them. And, and I... Wow, I saw all that we took. And there was this huge pie bigger than my face. And uh, there was all kinds of prepared meals for people that we don't even know. And I, I'm telling Kay, wow, what a heart our church has. I love our church's heart. 
of compassion. That's compassion. They needed help. And Our Lady stepped up and helped. In the name of God and in the name of Christ and in the name of our church. But compassion shows your love. You say, I love people and we love the lost and we love people in our church but you have no compassion you're missing the commandment of god the commandment of love have compassion show compassion honesty is a love commandment you shall not steal neither deal falsely neither lie one to another and you shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of, the, of thy God. I am thy Lord. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not <clears throat> abide with thee all night until the morning. Leviticus 19, verses 11 through 13. And so we learn here that honesty is a love commandment. God commands us to be honest to one another do not defraud anyone do not gossip about them do not steal from them don't break into their home and take things because the commandment the main commandment is to love one another and in doing so we need to obey this commandment of being honest can you imagine a society that is honest like that but that's what God says is commandment. To love is to be honest. And when I show my honesty, I don't steal from you. I don't lie about you. I don't defraud you. I don't gossip about you. I show my love. Honesty shows love. When you're honest in a relationship, it shows love. When you're honest to your children, it shows your love. When you obey this love commandment, you show love. Now, again, we're getting this from the Old Testament, the commandments of God. I'm getting someplace. Kindness is a love commandment. Thou shalt not curse the deaf nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy, <clears throat> thy God. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.14 It's amazing people don't uh, ever talk about this, but God says that you're to be kind to people who are disabled. I think it's a mark of society where a society is on how we treat people who cannot help themselves, the elderly, children, and the disabled. I think it's a mark of the heart of a church on how they treat the elderly, children, and the disabled. And the kindness that we're supposed to be. It says here, the love commandment is to be kind. That shows your love. Even to people who are disabled, the blind, the deaf, mentally disabled. To show kindness towards them. Now sometimes it's not always easy. Some people are difficult to deal with. People with bipolar. Uh, you can go on. But it, we can still show them kindness. And to be kind to them. And so kindness is a love commandment found in Leviticus 19. Impartiality is a love commandment. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Leviticus 19.15 He's saying, don't show uh, partiality just because they're poor. Oh, they're poor. Is that not what's happening in California, by the way? California, you're allowed to steal up a certain amount of money or items 
from any store and they will not prosecute you. All in the name of these are poor people and therefore they, des they, need, they need these things. So it's okay for them to steal. That's not being impartial. Judgment should happen. You shouldn't steal even if you're poor. You shouldn't steal if you're rich. You should be impartial no matter what the person is. The book of James talks about that too. When people come into your church, you say the poor people sit back here and, and the rich people sit over here in the, the, the fancy area, the nice area. You don't do that. You're to be impartial. And that's the commandment of God. When I'm impartial, when I don't care where you come from, who you are, I love you and I show you love. Poor, rich. There's a, there's a thing out there called uh, liberation theology. And you wouldn't believe how thick it is, especially among the black churches. And the belief that God is always with the poor and against the rich. No, he's not. You think God really cares how much money you have or don't have? He looks at your heart, not your pocketbook. That's a man thing. And here's the commandment straight from God in Leviticus. And if we could grab hold of this and that's how we show our love is impartial. I love you no matter what. Even Proverbs says, though, it's easier for us to love rich people than poor people. But it doesn't make it right. We're to love and show impartiality. A man who has more money doesn't have more say than a poor person. And because you're poor, that doesn't mean you have more say than a rich person. That's not godly. That's not love. Remember one time in a church, we were having a church vote about something and, and we had the vote and a man stood up and said, you got to retake that vote. Why? I give more money to this church than anyone. Look it up. You know it. You know, I give more money than anyone. And so what I say should have more weight than what some of these other people say, because they don't give as much as I do. Thank God the pastor said, well, that's not how we operate. That's not how we do things. And he goes, if I leave here, this church will close down because I keep it going. Impartiality is a commandment of God. And that's how we show love to be impartial. Come to our church and be loved. No matter how much money you have or you don't have, no matter how much money you give or don't give, it's one of the reasons we have the box stack there. I don't know. I don't care. I don't. That's between you and God. My job is to love you. Impartiality is a love commandment. Discretion is a love commandment. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. <clears throat> Leviticus 19.16. So it's saying not to go around telling stories and, 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 and telling on people and gossiping and going from house to house. The love commandment is to be discreet. In other words, I find out something about you. I don't go around telling everybody about it. I hear a rumor about you. I don't spread it. Because that's not love. And the commandment of God, when he says to us in Leviticus 19, the commandment of love is not to be a talebearer, to have discretion. The Bible says later on that love covers a multitude of sins. In other words, love has discretion. I may know your sin, but that doesn't mean I have to tell everybody else about your sin. And you may have sinned against me. And I, that means I can use discretion and not tell everybody about how you sinned against me. 
I may have hurt you badly, but you love has discretion. And it's a commandment. It's a love commandment. Where to use discretion. But believe in it. it. I can't pronounce it. Is a love commandment. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Didn't we just read this in 1 John chapter 2? He says, I didn't write to you a new commandment. It's nothing new, John says. This is the biggest. This is the law. A commandment. Don't have hate in your heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's why Jesus says, I got a new commandment. Love your neighbor as I've loved you. Love one another as I've loved you. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19, 17 through 18. And so the commandment is to not avenge yourself. The love commandment is not to hate others. Not to have hate in your heart. That's the law. But you didn't know that was the law. And so God says, I need you to obey these commandments. These commandments will show love to each other. Here's the point. There was a man that came to Jesus one time. I think he was a lawyer. And uh, probably was because lawyers always have trick questions. I was on the stand once and the lawyer had me all twisted up like a pretzel. I knew what I was going to say. I knew what needed to be said. Never got it out because of his questions. And he just had me. Matter of fact, I answered one question and they, they moved to have a mistrial because of my answer. And the judge said, no, no, we're not going to have a mistrial. He just answered your question. But that's how messed up he had me. And so a lawyer comes to Jesus and says to him to trip him up. What is the greatest commandment? Now, the trip up was be they could go and say, Jesus said, this is the one commandment to keep. You don't have to keep the others. This is the one. And what was Jesus's answer? A remarkable, beautiful answer. He said, love your God with all your heart. That's the greatest commandment to love God. But he said, wait a minute. There's a second one like unto it. What does that mean? In other words, if you love God, you'll do this second commandment. They're connected. And the second commandment is to what? To love your neighbor or love one another. To love your neighbor. And he says, here we go. All the what? Law and all the prophets, what? Hang on these two commandments. All the law. All the rules in the Old Testament are about one or the other. Showing love to God and showing love for others. And that's what Leviticus 19 is doing. He's having commandments. He's putting rules. Here's the love commandments. If you want to love one another, if you want to keep from hating one another, here are the commandments. Obey. Respect. Faithfulness. Compassion. Honesty. Kindness. Impartiality. Discretion. Show love. These are the commandments for your love towards one another. That's love. 
And when we say, I love you, these are the commandments I'm willing to obey. To keep. By the way, I'll end it with this. Have you ever read 1 Corinthians 13 and tried to match it with Leviticus 19? Can you see the same list, basically, in 1 Corinthians 13 as in Leviticus 19? The Old Testament doesn't go away. We don't ignore it because we see the heart of God. And the commandments are the same. The commandments are the same. Love one another. Well, this is how you do it. And so, this month, it would be great of us as individuals to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. To read 1 John chapter 3. To read Leviticus 19. As we say that love never fails, we want an understanding, a handle of what love is. God is there to show us in these three chapters. Read 1 John chapter 2 if you want to add that. 1 Corinthians 13. 1 John chapter 3. And Leviticus 19. And you'll get a better handle of what it means when God says, this is the commandment that you love one another. Let us close in prayer.